I have the pleasure today of being here at Microgrid 2020 Global with Jim Smith, who is the COO of PowerSecure, which is a Southern company subsidiary. Hi, Jim. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, Alyssa. Appreciate you having me. Looking forward to the conversation. So resilience, the topic of the hour. You couldn't have picked a better topic to talk about. Um, when it comes to microgrid benefits, how does, how does that tend to rank? When you talk about resiliency and the storms and, and, and what's happened in the Gulf, uh, for, for me, a perfect example is we've had one customer that's operated three times during the Gulf storms of Laura, Sally, and Delta. And the reliability feature of that customer, we had, that one, we had one of those customers that operated 21 plus days on generation, right, from utility outage being out. So, you know, think about, when you think about it from a resiliency and a reliability standpoint, you know, we had assets in place that performed flawlessly during three different events, obviously the resiliency features, and then, to, you know, to run 21 days, uh, you know, during one of those events is, uh, you, know, you know, speak about the storms and the resiliency, I think that sums it up really well. Wow, so 20, so this customer had um, three separate outages and yes. all together uh, ran 21 days on the microgrid there was one, there, the customer ran more than 21 days. The, we had one 21 day period during Laura that this, this grocery store ran the whole time. So, you know, think about the customer in the area that's providing groceries in one of the few places that are operating in the Gulf when the storm came through, but it took 21 days for utility power to be restored. Before these customers, these kind of customers start working with you, do you find that they generally understand the monetary value of resilience? Are they actually calculating it these days? You know, they're definitely, definitely more sophisticated uh, around the aspects of, uh, you know, what resiliency means to them. But again, it, but, but I would also say that it, uh, it varies by customer segment. You know, when you talk about mission, what we would call mission critical hospitals, certain industrials, you know, the food and beverage market, I mean, they, you know, they, they obviously know, they've calculated if there's a, you know, a 10 minute outage that disrupts a manufacturing process or you know there's a food or distribution center that's out without power four or five hours they they know what that product loss cost is to them uh, and then a lot of them are very educated around you know the, the the utility tariffs or opportunities that could be provide some revenue for them by having uh, you know these backup assets so you know one they can get a return and then two they also have the resiliency you know for uh, you know, for, for all these different storms and wildfires and all the other things that we're dealing with today. So it's a dual advantage to them financially. One is that they don't lose product or service that's going to cost them money. And two, they have the ability to do some interaction, monetary interaction with the grid that can, can bring revenue into to their operation. That's right. That's correct. So they're, they're, and then there's some customers that are still, you know, coming along into the microgrid space, right, that you that you uh, that might not be aware of some of those revenue streams. So there is still that continued education piece with some customers. And then I, I think lastly on that piece, we, we we so find so many customers that we start working with that what they thought they needed maybe at the outset versus really where the solution ends up being varies greatly. Interesting. I'm much surprised good. today of yeah how much that changes throughout the the engineering and development process. So it's a journey, microgrid development, a journey of problem solving, I would guess. I think you coined it very well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so we are in interesting times now. We've got these hurricanes that came blasting through, especially um, the Southeast. Um, and then there's the wildfires in California, which are probably the biggest story of microgrids this year and probably last year. Um, so how have the wildfires sort of opened up the eyes of customers and, and what kind of customers are we seeing uh, coming into beginning to research microgrids as a result of those wildfires? Uh, that's a good question. And, and it, it is different from wildfires and the hurricanes, right? We see the, the PSPS events on the West Coast have, uh, you know, they've resulted in multiple days of outages, right? That have presented a whole new set of challenges for, for everyone out there. It's like, you know, you have a, you have a PSPS event and, you know, how do you have a resiliency, uh, how, how do you have a resiliency 
support for three, four, five days, right, of potential power outages. And you've not had customers in these locations that have dealt with hurricanes or some of the other disasters that the East Coast have. So it's new. Uh, and the longevity of those outages have made a lot of customers think, uh, I think a perfect example is we have a, a large, uh, we have three distribution centers that we're, uh, that we're putting microgrids in for a large clothing retailer in California. And, you know, the premise is, is that, you know, they cannot have their supply chain in these distribution centers disrupted by three or four days of outages and not being able to, you know, get their product dispersed, you know, throughout the rest of the country. That's, you know, an example that, the new example we've seen of folks, you know, merging in the microgrid market. That is unusual. We used to hear about fire stations or water yes. treatment facilities or things like that, or even grocery stores, but a, 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 a distribution center like that is, is really kind of a, a, new, a, a new kind of entity opening their eyes to microgrids. Thank you, Jim. That was a tremendous interview, very informative. Um, really appreciate you being here today. No, we appreciate the time, and, and as always, we appreciate the thought leadership that micro knowledge, microgrid knowledge has in the industry, and we're, we're glad to be a part of it. Thank you.